All right, you guys, and welcome back to another video. I know it's been a little while since I've posted. Work has been a little bit hectic, but now things have slowed down a little bit. We can get back into the swing of things because there's a lot of content to talk about in Star Citizen. With everything coming out in 323, I wanted to go ahead and cover as much as I can ahead of the release. Now, on ISC, we are getting incremental updates about what is being delivered. And on the most recent one, we got an update on distribution centers. And I think that's very interesting because uh, this patch 323 that is coming up is going to have a lot of updates for cargo hauling, for trading and for the cargo profession overall. Now you look at some of the features that are coming with distribution centers, with cargo missions. Uh, these are the ability to actually haul cargo instead of trading them. Trading them is where you have to purchase the cargo upfront with your own money. This is a mission. So you are moving someone else's product, uh, risking someone else's money, basically an NPC. And of course you have the instance hangers and the personal hangers and the cargo elevators. So it's going to be a complete rework to how we deal with items in the verse. Uh, we talked about the item bank in a previous video and all of these features, these are major features for cargo. So I thought it made sense to talk about cargo ships in this video. Uh, this is a very big part of the game. A lot of players enjoy doing this. It's going to be very interesting. There's a lot of discussion about these distribution centers and how safe, dangerous, how they're actually going to work with the cargo elevators being exposed. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting with the missions. Okay. If the missions are going to encourage you to go into the hangars, if it's a, like a regular package delivery mission, we don't entirely know what these, all of these missions are going to entail. If it's going to be a type of situation where there are multiple shops, but getting right into it, I think it, it makes a lot of the smaller cargo ships a little bit more useful because now instead of putting up your own money, uh, you're going to be doing this as a mission. So there may be more profit in, in it for you. Okay. Not risking anything up front, maybe just some reputation. So we're going to start off with the hull a. Now this is a very interesting ship in my opinion, because it is, um, you know, it's not a bad price. It has a decent amount of cargo on it. Now, um, this ship is a solo cargo hauler and it has its cargo on the outside. And if you think about it, this will help loading this ship a little bit faster, but because the cargo is on the outside, it does make it a bit more dangerous to cargo haul in a ship like the hull a, uh, again, if people are worried about a lot of these locations with distribution centers, this might be one of the ships that you are going to want to have go from hangar to hangar. I don't know what the armistice zone situation is going to be like at these locations, but I think it's a very interesting proposition because the hull A is one of the few hull CV ships that can actually land on a planet and take advantage of these distribution centers and their new missions. Okay. So next we move on to the Nomad. The Nomad is a very similar situation to the Hull A because it has its cargo on the outside it is a single seat, uh, ship, but it has more guns than the Hull A and a little bit better maneuverability to be able to defend itself a little bit more. It's not a very tanky ship. Um, but it is pretty fast again, maneuverable. It has decent guns. Um, the cargo is kind of more centralized at the back. I think that this ship would be a little bit easier to get in and get out quick. But at the end of the day, I think, uh, this is another ship that you're going to want to go from hangar to hangar. 
then we have the freelancer max this is a uh you know a great ship for mid to entry level cargo running okay this is a ship i recommend for people who want to get into serious cargo run it has decent shields good firepower a good interior that side door so you can exit out on it has a lot of cargo capacity it can carry ground vehicles hover bikes what have you um it will need to get updated as CHE, um, you know, changes things with the resource management system and the ability to uh, remove components. The Freelancer series still has not gotten that update yet. So it's going to be interesting. It kind of shares the same, uh, you know, component access issues with the with the Zeus Mark II CL, the cargo variant of the Zeus, where its components is on the walls on the side of the cargo area. So you can't really access the components if it's full of cargo. But I think the Zeus CL again is kind of similar to the Freelancer, it has good firepower, it has a lot of cargo capacity, feature comforts, it's gonna have that door or, or ladder at the front where you can uh you know access entry and exit um this ship in my opinion is going to be very popular in the verse when it comes out it's also going to be able to uh have ground vehicles hover bikes that type of thing uh on the inside um yeah and then of course we have the spirit c1 this is the most recent entry to the entry level cargo hauling profession, uh, a competitor to the, um, the, the Cutlass Black. And uh, the Cutlass Black is also a good addition to this list for entry level cargo hauling. It is, of course, you know, a, a, a fan favorite, one of the cornerstone ships in the verse. A lot of people have it and the spirit c1 has good firepower good maneuverability again can carry ground vehicles even you know something like a fury inside of it uh it does not have a secondary uh entrance and exit i think it's you know its biggest downside but it is you know still relatively small enough and it is you know designed to be kind of like a hallway so you can just run straight through the ship to get out not too much of a big deal in my opinion. Uh, the beds inside are actually supposed to be escape pods as well. Then we have the hull B. Now we don't really know much about what the hull B is going to be like when it is finished. I suspect it will grow in size a bit. Um, I think it's another interesting ship because like the hull A, um, you know, it has all of its cargo on the outside, um, making it a bit more vulnerable. But again, we're going to have to see how things work out with distribution centers. Again, I don't really know too much about the specifics of this ship, but I think, again, it's very similar to the Hull A, more cargo. It sits in between, of course, the Hull A and the Hull C. Uh, I Again, I think this ship is not really on CIG's radar to get released anytime soon. So, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, uh, and then of course the Raylan. The Raylan is a very interesting addition because we know it is currently in development. Um, and kind of from the sounds of it, CIG might be planning to try to release this ship sometime this year. You know, rumors have it slated for Alien Week or, uh, and again, that would be a good time to release a ship like this um you know we don't really have that uh, uh you know industrial alien ship in the verse right now the sulin is a good starter ship but there isn't really a good industrial hauler type alien ship the you know most of the alien ships are they're just combat ships so to have something like the railing is going to be a big deal in the game. And I think a lot of people who have one are going to be interested to start using it. Now, what's kind of uh, unique about the railing is that it has uh, these uh, kind of triangle shaped cargo pods. 
and I'm not sure it might have been designed before CIG changed the cargo metric. So, you know, before everything was kind of one SCU boxes, but now we have various SCU sizes. Um, and I don't exactly know how the new cargo containers are going to work with the railing. So basically I think it's going to be like the prospect of saddle bags where the saddle bags are equivalent to a certain amount of SU. I think these cargo pods might be equivalent to a certain amount of SU and they'll just kind of do it that way instead of, uh, you know, uh, making a new attachment system for the current car con cargo containers. Um, but again, I could be wrong. Maybe it's some type of magnetic attachment system and you can attach containers to it, but, uh, you know, being bespoke, I think that might be kind of a handicap for dealing with, you know, other kinds of cargo that you might have. Now, of course, uh, when you go to a location to trade or haul cargo, they'll probably know that you're in a railing and load up that cargo in containers that your ship can handle or CIG might do a system where, you know, it, it, you know, the railing can accept, uh, the various standard sizes of SU boxes. I really don't know what CIG plans on doing about the railing, but they are working on it. So that means they must have a plan, right? Uh, and then I want to talk about the Tur Taurus. The Taurus is a great ship for trading uh, in the Constellation line of ships. It can carry a lot of cargo. Um, it has a lot of firepower to be able to defend itself. Uh, maneuverability and handling is not too bad. Um, it does have a secondary entrance and exit at the front. You know, gun to it for your friends, the tractor beam uh it's a very impressive ship i know a lot of people like using it uh it's you know it's going to be big when the distribution centers and uh all that stuff come out and then of course the c2 the c2 is kind of like the primary go-to cargo hauling ship of the verse right now because it is so versatile it can carry so much it can easily be loaded and unloaded because it has those two main ramps one at the front one at the rear uh and then the interior is pretty manageable you know you go up the elevator or the ladder and you go through a couple of doors and you're at the cockpit um i think this ship it's definitely going to remain kind of the king of cargo for a while. Uh, you know, we kind of talked about in a previous video if the Hull C would dethrone it, but it's really designed to target a different type of uh, uh, section of the economy, a different type of gameplay and, you know, a different type of uh, resources. So the, the you are getting a lot of, uh, you know, bang for your buck so to say with this ship in my opinion because it's so capable it's so versatile you know it is a uh, ground vehicle transport ship as well you can have other ships parked in it snub fighters ships like the fury uh ship like the pisces um again it is a very capable ship i think this ship is going to will kind of remain uh you know as popular as it is and of course, the tried and true Caterpillar. The Caterpillar is a great ship. It has, uh, and you know, we've talked about this in previous videos. Um, it, there are some features that the Caterpillar is still waiting on. It recently got its tractor beam to help loading and unload it uh, a little bit easier. Of course, the command uh, module can, uh, you know, be detached is supposed to be. I know Sergi talked about that, and they're also waiting for the ability for the uh, the side door elevators to come down. So it's going to be a bit difficult to load up as cargo becomes completely physicalized, and you have to you know move each box into this thing. I think it's going to be a little less popular after this update, and you know ships like the C two are going to be more popular because. Again, it's really being hindered by not 
having those elevators be able to reach the surface to make loading and unloading a little bit easier. Having to track the beam up every container into this thing is going to be difficult. And, you know, of course, people are saying that, you know, the max lift tractor beams are not going to be usable in armor assist zones. But again, it's kind of one of those interesting things. I don't really know if these distribution centers are going to be armor assist zones. I think they're obviously going to have, uh, you know, the karma rays active for them for crimes and whatnot. But the way CIG is kind of describing them is, you know, other players sneaking into these locations, players bombing these locations, attacking these locations. Those, that's not really something you can do in an armistice zone. So I really don't think these distribution centers are going to be armistice zones. I think they might be in some type of uh, gray area where they are under control of the karma way. So, you know, if you commit a crime there, uh, the, the, you know, governing body will know that you commit a crime, but it's not going to stop you from pulling out a weapon or shooting. So I do think the max lift tractor beam is going to be functional at these locations. I don't think these locations are going to be full armistice zones like the other, um, you know, outposts in the game. Okay, and of course, we have the Banu Merchantman. This is a serious ship. This is a ship that is on the back burner right now. Uh, I definitely do not think it's coming out this year, but it has a ton of cargo. It is designed for it. It is designed to have an eternal marketplace. So what cargo you have in there, you can sell to other players. It is going to be a big economic powerhouse uh you know cag hasn't really said too much about the player economy and how that's going to work with players trading between each other so it's going to be very interesting to see what you know the gameplay around that's going to look like uh it's not the only ship in that category the the kraken uh, also has the ability, it has an internal marketplace, it has a lot of cargo. Kraken's another ship that can be on this list. Uh, not a dedicated cargo ship, so to say. It is, you know, a, a carrier ship, of course, but uh, it, that variant specifically, uh, you know, I believe has additional cargo as well as the um, the marketplace to be able to sell to other players. So, so I think the Merchantman is going to be a very interesting ship when it comes out. Moving right along, then we have the Hull C. This was a ship that we got late last year. It is a ship that kind of changes the game for what, you know, CIG have for the trading and cargo hauling profession. Again, it has all of its cargo on the outside, but it, it has such a large cargo capacity it's really in a different league than uh, a lot of these other ships you know uh, of course it is kind of more in the same lead league as the merchantman and the kraken um but of course uh, i think uh, because it can't land on planets it's really kind of limited to where it can go Again, the Kraken can land on a planet, the Merchantman can land on a planet, the kind designed to do that and still be able to trade with, uh, um, you know, uh, ground facilities, uh, settlements, distribution centers. Potentially, I'm not sure how large distribution centers hangars are going to be, but I think that uh, the whole sea being limited to stations really kind of changes its trade routes, what it's capable of kind of doing, the missions that CIG are going to make for this ship. And it was kind of the first time we're, we were seeing that type of more limited gameplay from the cargo hauling profession, from the trading profession. Uh, but I think the more focused gameplay is going to be interesting for some. It's going to be the same with the next two ships in uh, the series here, the Hull D and the Hull E. These are massive ships and, uh, you know, honestly, it, with the size that these ships are, um, 
you know it's it's going to be the same story as the hull sea you're going to be trading between stations and um you know that's not necessarily a bad thing but it is a different gameplay style altogether from a lot of the other cargo ships uh, you're not going to be dealing with distribution centers and um you know settlements and outposts and whatnot you're just going to be going from station to station. And right now, uh, you know, the whole sea is not in the best place because of the gameplay loop around it. I think CAG is going to have to make it a little bit better. It's not going to be able to take full advantage of the full physicalized cargo system. Again, because the way it works is you kind of have to fly into a box and then the cargo kind of magically appears on your ship. I don't see that changing in 323 um i think that might be around for a while i think they really wanted to get the whole seat out there so they can you know figure out modularity because we're also getting uh economy rebalance uh with 323 so i think they really want to test that stuff to be able to take advantage of uh a lot of the information that they've gathered uh over the past couple of months with the whole seat to see how they can better implement the hull D and the hull E because they have vastly more cargo capacity. And, you know, a lot of people you kind of predicted that it would be potentially game breaking some of the, uh, you know, what they're capable of. And again, because they're kind of limited to stations, that's really it hasn't turned out to be the case. And, you know, CIG doing different things to kind of balance it you know continue to make the gameplay interesting and engaging i think there's still a lot of work that they need to do you know before they come out with the whole d and the whole e i you know i i don't think the gameplay is in the best place right now for these ships for these larger ships that can't land on planets that are stuck you know, you know trading between stations i think uh you know obviously the cargo decks was one of those things that uh, a lot of the community had a a lot of high hopes for. Um, right now, the kind of reserve to selling, you know, different gear. Uh, but really, they need kind of like uh, an outdoor uh, kind of cargo loading bay, kind of uh, you know how they have at these large ports, these giant cranes that take the cargo containers or for the large cargo ships um I, I think they need that kind of system where you know maybe an elevator comes up with all the cargo for the whole sea and then a drone attaches them to the place or something like that i don't know you know you know what would be the best solution to have the cargo physically uh you know attached to the hull c i know in the promotional material they showed an mpuv you know moving crates onto the plates and i think in law that's what's supposed to happen in game i don't know if they're gonna make it like that that seems very uh clunky that seems kind of cumbersome um i i feel like maybe kind of an automated drone system would make a little bit more sense. I know they, they, uh, you know, value immersion and something like that, but that's something that I feel like in real life, humans would automate that, uh, in the star system universe, we don't have robots, we don't have AI, but you know, AI is developing rapidly in, uh, our current world. And uh, I think CIG needs to be a little bit more flexible on that stance. I think we need robots. I think we need AI. I think we need automated loading and unloading, you know, machines that can just deliver this stuff for us. You know, obviously there are some aspects, maybe you might pay more for that service to have robots loaded for you or whatever, you know, on the ground, you can obviously have NPCs do that because it's a breathable atmosphere and whatnot. And I'm perfectly fine with that. You pay an NPC to load your ship and uh, that's okay but in space with these hull seas you know having them magically appear on the ship is not the end of the world it is a game after all but i think obviously cig wants to take in a different direction a more immersive direction a more permanent direction and uh you know let me know what you guys think what are your suggestions about how a system like that could work what do you think cig should do to kind of get the whole seat in a better place 
this was just kind of a taste of uh, some of the cargo ships in the game. There are many more, you know, you can always uh, use the MSR and the Corsair, but I, I know I, talk, I talked a lot about those ships in other videos, and I kind of want to keep this one a little bit shorter uh, to, you know, kind of play with the different length of videos because I know I've been posting, you know, 30 minute videos and whatnot. So let me know what you guys think about this video, the video length, the ships, are you excited about distribution centers and the updates coming to the cargo and inventory system? The old inventory system is going the way of the Dodo Bird. And, uh, uh, you know, it is going, there are, you know, potentially going to be some growing pains with that. I don't want to predict too much right now. One, because it is right around the corner. And uh, two, I really don't know yet. Uh, I, I am a person that really likes you know, the physical aspect of moving boxes and doing that. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. Right now, having the cargo instantly populate in your ship, you only really have to go from point A to point B. Um, the type of player that really moves cargo a lot are salvagers and pirates. Uh, cargo haulers can take advantage of the, the cargo being automatically populated in the ship and then just taking it to their final destination and selling it. But with this rework, you're going to have to call the cargo elevator. You're going to have to move every box yourself on and off of your ship. And that's going to be, of course, that's going to be an experience for people that is going to be a change. And we all know change is not easily um, something that uh, people get used to. It, it, again, it, there will be growing pains with it. But that's okay. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, I, I, of course, I think it's going to bring value to those people who do want to move boxes. Maybe you hire somebody to do that for you. Give them a percentage. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for me here today, you guys. I love the comments. I love reading them. It's been a little while that I have been able to kind of uh, talk to you guys. In, down there in the comment section so uh let me know what you're thinking let me know what you think about the video uh and like i always say at the end of these videos you guys like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you guys in the next one salute